Hey guys, welcome to my video on six ways to jumpstart positive reinforcement when training your bird. So I've been talking an awful lot about, you know, parrot wellness lately. And one of the things in parrot wellness that the Richard M. Schumbold Parrot Wellness Program at UC Davis talks about is using behavioral training to support your pet. That is part of parrot wellness. They've got six different uh, strategies that they really have researched and uncovered that help pets live a happy, fulfilling life, pets meaning parrots. And um, one of those is behavioral training. So that's why I'm doing this video is, is to help you really hone in on these on positive reinforcement and use it effectively to change the challenging behavior or to just train your bird more pro-social behaviors, manners and stuff. And, you know, just start enjoying your pet more. So uh, just a little bit about me. I'm Diane Burrows. I'm the founder and CEO of birdsupplies.com, which is a website that's dedicated to parrot wellness. And so my company manufactures a range of parrot supplements. I've got a couple of them here behind me. I also manufacture a range of bird collars for feather plucking or birds, you know, that have injured themselves or recovering from surgery, that sort of thing. Soft, comfortable bird collars as opposed to the cone of shame. And then the third, I guess, will of my business is educational resources in the form of like ebooks, printed books like the feather plucking workbook behind me, courses, behavior consultations. So if you get stuck with this video, in fact, because it does get a little complicated, behavior's kind of scary. It's, it's got its own lingo and, and its own systematic approach. If you get stuck and want a consultation, you know, give me a shout out and I'll, I'll work with you on that. So basically, positive reinforcement. Let's talk about what that is. It's pretty simple, actually. Positive reinforcement is when the bird gets something that's reinforcing that it wants for performing a certain behavior. So there's different things that birds will work for. And when they get what they want following a behavior, then they're more apt to replace or repeat that behavior over and over again. So a lot of people get a little confused about the behavioral training. And in fact, you know, what we know about positive reinforcement is it's the most effective way that we can train animals. They'll work for positive rewards. Whereas if we use negative or, you know, abrasive, if you will, aggressive forms of trying to change behavior, challenging behavior, especially with a bird, we're gonna see a whole new set of unwanted behaviors arise because our birds are trying to escape feeling unsafe around us. So they will work for rewarding reinforcement and especially when we're training them using positive methods, they're going to really want to try to get that reward. And uh, when they make the choice to do the behavior versus us forcing them, it just turns training into a joy for both you and the pet. So that's why it's so important. So I'm going to cover these six strategies. I'm going to talk about what is the ABC model of behavior. I'm going to teach you how to do a time study. I'm going to teach you how to analyze that time study and write what's called a SMART goal. You'll learn also, you know, about what the function of behavior is, that C part in the ABC, what behavior is. Then I'll talk about teaching replacement behaviors and identify several different replacement behaviors you can teach your bird. Whenever you try to eliminate one behavior, you have to replace it with something that's more positive that you want the bird to do. And then I'll talk with you about how you can can kind of change your mindset of how you've trained in the past to new more effective methods, science-based methods that will reinforce the behaviors you want to see more of. And then finally, we'll talk about how to help you cope with these unwanted behaviors or if they continue to occur. And so we'll cover those six steps in this presentation. So first of all, let's talk about the ABC model of behavior. And here's a little template on that or an infographic, if you will. So basically what this says is that we've uncovered as behavioral scientists that we can understand all behavior by figuring out what triggers the behavior, identifying the behavior in a measurable format, and then what reinforces it. So that's what ABC stands for. A stands for antecedent. And an antecedent, the definition of it is just an aspect of the environment that influences the behavior to occur in the first place. So uh, I'll give you an example here in a minute. The behavior is the behavior in question. So behavior is observable. It's also measurable. It's an action that has a function. It's a function of the antecedent and the consequences both. And the consequence is essentially the C part that if the behavior is perceived to aid the bird in obtaining something desired 
or escaping something undesired, then it's more likely to increase and occur over and over again. So here's a brief example. When I was about 22, I think, I got in a bad car wreck. And here's what my old ABC was. I would get in the car, I worked an early morning shift, and then I had to get to class real quick. And so I got into kind of the habit of running the yellow lights to get home quicker. And that got me home quicker, let me shower and stuff before class. So one day I got in a pretty bad wreck doing that. I T-boned somebody. So instead of, you know, pressing the gas to run through a yellow light and get home quicker, my consequence totally changed. I perceived the yellow light as actually kind of a friend. So the, the yellow light was the antecedent. The behavior was my reaction. Was I going to hit the gas or was I going to hit the brake? And the consequence pre in those college days was, hey, I get to get home faster. Now my behavior is I see a yellow light. I hit the brake because I want to avoid a wreck. I want to escape a wreck because that was pretty scary. And man, somebody could have got hurt, but nobody did. Thank goodness. I think I got a couple stitches in my face over it, but that's, that's how behavior happens. So something triggers it, behavior happens, and then something reinforces it. So now we're going to talk about how to find out what the ABCs of your bird's behavior is. And you got to do a time study to figure that out. Now, what is a time study? A time study is actually like literally documenting incidents, several incidents of the behavior in question. And you're looking for things like the day and the time it happened, the setting, what was the environment like, what the antecedent could have been, describe the behavior in detail, and then describe what you think the consequence was, what the bird got out of the behavior. Now, I'll make this easy for you. I've, you can download this quick, simple chart here to start documenting those real fast. And it, you can do it real fast, like under a minute, if you set your chart up correctly. Like for instance, you know, you could have just little check boxes that you would check off. That's how I've done it when I was doing these time studies in my private practice, not too long ago. So once you collect all that information, then you'll be able to analyze it. And what the science tells us is that you want to get a statistically significant number of observations of this behavior. And they say 25 is, will give you a good statistical amount. In other words, you can kind of really figure out very closely to accuracy, very accurately, I guess is what I'm trying to say, what the ABC is, as opposed to just, you know, one time shot where you're kind of just guessing. You're actually using the data to inform you what, what's the most frequent antecedent, what's the most frequent consequence. And that'll just really save you a lot of time at the end of the day. Now people are like, okay, 25 incidents, really? You can really get this done in a week. So for instance, set up a system for yourself where you're collecting data three to four times a day. Sometimes it work best for like say feather plucking would be, you know, checking the birds, the bottom of the bird's cage when I wake up in the morning and then checking its cage before I leave for work. That would be the second observation checking the cage for feathers when I get home from work and then fourth time before I go to bed or before the bird goes to bed. So you've got four behavior incidents right there, four to five minutes to document them. And by the end of the week, you're going to have 28, which is the statistically significant number. And you'll be able to analyze it with a lot more confidence because you've really put that energy into it and it only took a week. So once you have all that data about the behavior, now it's time to analyze it. And you're going to be looking for some very specific patterns and situations about the behavior. I mean, you're going to know this behavior inside and out when you're done with this time study and analyzing it. You'll be able to describe the setting that the behavior happens in, what in the environment could be triggering this behavior. You're going to know how frequently it's happening. You're going to know how intense it is and put the behavior in a measurable format because if you can measure it, then you'll know if it's getting better or worse. And you got to know that to know if the strategies you choose to fix the behavior are actually working or making the behavior worse. So once you understand the intensity and the, the frequency of the behavior, then you'll know if your strategies are working. You're going to want to be looking for what are the most frequent antecedents and what are the most frequent consequences or what is my bird getting out of this behavior. So there's a lot of information that you're going to get from this time study that's just going to be super valuable. And it's not just about the behavior problem, but it's about what your bird is motivated to behave. What motivates your bird to behave in one way or another? When you know some of the stuff that really motivates your bird to behave, then you can motivate your bird to try new behaviors. And that's the whole goal is we had talked a little bit about replacing these challenging behaviors with more pro-social healthy behaviors that will just make your parrot enjoy its life much better. So let's talk a little bit about the functions of behavior. And it might sound a little daunting to find out what the functions of the behavior. Think of the function of the behavior as the consequence, the reinforcement that the bird got out of the behavior. Now I have this chart here called the 
seat, the four functions of behavior. So the seat stands for sensory, escape, attention, and tangible goods. So sensory is something that provides the bird like a sensory experience that is enjoyable, that it wants to get over and over again. And, you know, we'll see some different birds. I'll do some different behaviors. It's, those, those are kind of sensory. These repetitive behaviors are often sensory in nature in uh, because what they do is they kind of ward off anxiety. Escape is when the bird is actually trying to avoid something that is unwanted. So for instance, you have a bird with that's afraid of men or something like that. And every time a man approaches, it either lunges at them aggressively or bites them or tries to fly off. So that The bird is actually, that behavior is actually a function of trying to escape, either drive the man off or fly off on its own. And so that's what escape is. And you would use different strategies to turn that challenging behavior around than if the bird were motivated by attention. So attention's the third in this SEAT acronym, sensory escape attention. So birds will do a lot of things for attention. Think of them as their flock animals. You know, they in the wild, their whole brain is geared toward being a member of a flock. And when they get attention, whether it's positive or negative for a behavior, they're gonna keep doing it over and over again. Now, screaming is a great example of that. A lot of birds find out that if they scream, I mean, it's so intolerable sometimes that we do run over there and we either pick them up and put them in their cage. They've got a little bit of attention just by us picking them up and putting them in a cage or yelling at them or what have you. And then they start repeating that behavior over and over again. So screaming is one of these behaviors that we accidentally teach and reinforce with attention. A lot of birds will do things for tangibles and that's usually how we train for these new replacement behaviors is using a tangible to give the bird a tree or a toy or something that it really wants. And so those are the four reinforcers that we've uncovered as behaviorists that are scientifically based sensory escape attention and tangibles and when you know what the function of the behavior is now you're in a position where you can use your birds need for that reinforcer to your advantage so to speak so once you know what the, all of this stuff is done the time study analyze the time study figured out what you think the function of your birds behavior is now you're in a position where you can write an intelligent and realistic goal to actually work on changing Changing this challenging behavior. So we've come a long way now. We've we've talked about you know how the behavior happened in the first place, how we figure out how the behavior happened, how we analyze it, uh, so that we're really making an educated decision here about the behavior, as opposed to just kind of guessing and trying one thing after another that never worked. You actually have some very solid information of using strategies so that you can develop an appropriate goal. Now in behavior sciences, we like to use what's called a SMART goal. So a SMART goal specifies the problem, it uh, puts it in a measurable format, it, uh, it's attainable, it's relevant to our situation, and then it's uh, got a time factor associated with it. So here's one I wrote as an example. So for the next three months, I'll use three parrot wellness strategies each day to decrease feather plucking from happening on a daily basis to only happening three or less times per week. So I've got a couple of time factors in there. It's pretty specific. I could make that more specific by saying I'll use dietary measures, bird training, preventative medicine. I'll get a good medical checkup for my bird. You know, that would be even more specific. It's measurable because I know how much I want this behavior to decrease. It's relevant because, you know, who wants their bird to pluck their feathers? And I, I know I'm going to work on this for three months. You know, that kind of motivates me. Okay, I've got three months to reach my goal and then I can, you know, it's a not this endless thing of going on and on and on. So now we've come to the point where we're ready to start teaching replacement behaviors. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna teach your birds some pro-social behaviors to replace the unwanted behavior. Think about how they've spent so much time doing this unwanted behavior. Well, you gotta give them something to do to take up that time and to engage them. So there's a lot of pro-social behaviors you can teach your bird. I'll just name about five of them. You can go to the blog post on my website, birdsupplies.com and actually come up with about 10 or 15 of them. One, you can teach your bird to leave it, you know, put something down or leave an object alone. You can teach it to stay in an expected place, like on its play stand, or even going back to its play stand. You can teach it to talk instead of scream. You could teach it to enjoy bathing and grooming or harness training. Those are just some of the things you can do. You can teach your bird to eat vegetables. You can practice taking medicine or pretend they're taking medicine. You know, there's a lot of behaviors. Now, you know what reinforces your bird from your time study, so you would reinforce 
reinforce them with either, you know, attention or a tangible item to teach them these new behaviors. If you're working with an escape behavior, a fearful bird, we change things up a little bit. So I'll kind of leave that one alone for now because we're looking at some positive ways to change our behaviors. So the more time you spend teaching your bird and reinforcing these desired behaviors, the less time your bird's going to have to do these undesired behaviors. And besides, if you remove the reinforcer, from the unwanted behavior, say the screaming, um, you decide you're not gonna pay attention to that bird at all when it screams, but you'll pay a heck of a lot of attention, generously rewarding it and reinforcing talking and chirping and whistling, then that's how the behavior starts to turn around. I hope that's making sense and you can see how we're starting to come full circle. But there's two other things that you have to do. You have to change your mindset from not reinforcing the challenging behavior anymore and really paying a lot of attention to the behaviors you want to see more of and planning how you're going to reinforce these new behaviors. So, you know, get yourself like a little treat pouch that you can hook to your pants or something that you can immediately dole out your bird's favorite treats. I've got a video on how to figure out what are the treats that your bird will work for. Watch that too. And then, you know, even identify some of the natural reinforcers that are occurring in your bird's environment that motivate the behavior and use those to your advantage. So there's different kinds of reinforcers. There's natural that just happen, you know, naturally after a behavior. And then there's these contrived ones, which are where you're purposefully providing something to the bird to, to motivate it to or elicit that behavior and so that you can reward it and that sort of thing. So I've got a couple of downloads for you. One is figuring out what your antecedent is, your target behavior, motivators, and then coming up with some of these contrived reinforcers that you can use to reinforce your bird. But the last thing that I want to talk about is that even when we're doing, using science-based strategies to change these behaviors, they, we often see what's called an extinction burst happen, which is in the bird's mind, it's like, hey, you know, it used to work. Every time I screamed, I'd get attention. Now I'm not getting any attention, so I better scream louder and longer. That's what an extension burst is. And it doesn't usually go on for very long, but it can be quite annoying and quite disheartening when you're trying your very best to change and turn around that behavior. So watch for that extinction burst. Know that it's normal and stick with your plan. It's very important that you don't backtrack and start reinforcing that behavior. I had a call today from a lady who was dealing with hyacinth macaw that was screaming. We talked about how she reinforces the screaming by picking her bird up, put in its cage. So it got attention all the way from the play stand to the cage, got put in the cage. Then it figured out that it can get even more attention from mom if it starts chewing up the paper in the bottom of the cage and throw in all that mess around on the floor and all this. And then she, she would find herself running over to the cage and scolding the bird and giving it all kinds of attention. The bird's behavior was due to it wanted attention. We talked about figuring out some replacement behaviors that you can start working on and reinforcing the heck out of those. And as much as you can, even if you have to buy earplugs, totally ignore that behavior, the unwanted behavior, the screaming going forward. Now, one of the things about planned ignoring, like I said, is it's, it's hard to do. And so you do have to have your plan, your strategy of how to do it. And remember that you can't eliminate dangerous behaviors with planned ignoring. So that's kind of a little caveat there that you need to keep track of. But slow and steady, keeping track of your progress and you know, using your SMART goal to give yourself kind of a timeline to see if you can really turn this behavior around using these strategies correctly will really help you out a lot. Now, if you get stuck on any of this, like I said, don't hesitate to book a behavior consultation. You can order as small as a half hour up to five different visits that are a half hour long. And the way I do these consultations is I'll take a deep history of what's going on in the first place and you know it really helps me to uncover what a lot of what we've covered here and then I kind of walk you through changing these behaviors and coach you you know over a couple of weeks if you need it or however much you've booked and that's how we go through this so I hope this has been helpful for you if you liked it you know please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel you then you can even if you hit that bell you know you will get like notifications when I put videos out I try to put them out maybe once a week or so. And uh, so until next week, you know, happy training with your bird and hope everything goes well. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.